In the deep sea, you're not on the ground just because you stopped sinking. Peacetime is hard times for Mercers like me. I used to be grateful for every job, no matter how boring or senseless it was. It's part of my routine to provide protection for supply boats and transports. It was my job to guard a sulfur shipment heading from the Gulf of Bengal to the Argentine Basin. Now sulfur isn't a particularly attractive prize for pirates or anarchists. So I got to wondering why a protective convoy was necessary, especially since there'd been few pirate attacks recently. The captain of the transporter insisted on taking the slalom route through the Mele Archipelago, crossing the South Pacific so as to round Cape Horn. I thought maybe he wanted to give himself and the crew a little entertainment in the pleasure domes of the Mele Archipelago. A few oars, some surface simulation, who knows? I had nothing against the idea. We passed south of the domes and headed straight for the South Pacific Basin. They came at us from every direction. A torpedo exploding close off my bow jolted me from my daydreams. A small fleet of fighter boats under the flag of the Shogun encircled us. It probably wasn't monarchists, just bandits from the tornado zone. As a greeting, they sent us a flash shark, which penetrated the outer wall of the freighter and knocked out its electrical system. A hungry swarm of bull sharks was after me. It's no fun in a fix like that if you've only got a dilapidated boat with one firing tower. The automatic finder picked out the approaching torpedoes and sent them to the bottom one after the other, while the only thing I could do was fire a few feeble thresher sharks against the agile boats. Then three things happened at once. My location system failed, an explosion astern set my boat rolling, and a smart shogun bomber, flashing painted teeth, appeared, hovering right in front of me. I might have known that she was behind it all. My own personal nightmare from the depths of the tornado zone. I closed the valves on my suit, crawled into the escape hatch, and angrily jettisoned my lifeboat with a blast of compressed air. And not a second too soon. My crippled boat rolled over and sank into darkness as the grinning bomber strafed my titanium capsule with a salvo of hard case shot. One glance at the freighter confirmed what I feared. Two enemy boats had docked on. The crew was being dealt with already. Before I passed out, I thought of my failure, and I wondered why the hell the anarchists needed sulfur so bad. I came to, freezing on a cold metal floor, and I didn't know which was sharper, the features of the woman or the blade of the knife she threatened me with. She was a Russo-Japanese named Hung Lung, which means Red Dragon. A long time ago, in a penal colony in the Sea of Okhotsk, I slept with her. But at that moment, feelings of nostalgia stayed deep. She was the enemy, always had been. I defeated her once in a fight at the edge of the sandwich trench and spared her life. She's like me. And our paths have crossed often, and she's always my enemy. We didn't talk much. She said it would be child's play to slit my throat, but the world still needed me now that evil was reaching out of the depths. I don't know what she meant by that, but it was the first time I ever heard fear in her voice. The Ronin didn't kill me. She did the same as I had done at the sandwich trench. She gave me a tank full of breathing gas and expelled me from a lock into the ocean. The breathing gas had almost run out when an Atlantic ore freighter picked me up. They brought me to the Argentine basin where an unpleasant meeting with my employer was waiting for me. That's where this whole damn business started. Thank you.